Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding. Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Regable. And I'm Couch Guy. You're watching the two, ding, ding. <laughs> the two Smart Guys show, where every week we bring you the latest and greatest in hacking electronic devices that you own. Because you don't want to hack other people's and make them mad at you. <laughs> then that's yeah, the answer to it. Well, yeah, maybe you do want to make them mad. There is some you know, value in that. Anyways, today we're covering super duper extreme long range Wi Fi. So, like, you're wide long range. So, on the box, they say this may go between like 100 and maybe 300 feet if you're lucky. Yeah. We're talking like going up to 20 miles. <laughs> and miles are awesome. Yes. So, if you want to like, like get some serious Wi Fi between like two houses, like you and your buddy's house, and share your entire network of whatever. <laughs> you can. Private, <laughs> private network, huh? Yeah, you're on like, it would be like a, what's that? Um, like not a BBS Mesh. or like back oh, in the olden days, well, you know, the, the BBS bulldog. would be pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah. So, well, or if you want to do a LAN party with your, you know, your gaming system, but you don't want to leave your house. Hey, <laughs> that's yeah. a good reason. Or, you know, if you're just transferring, you know, 500 terabytes or something, then you could do it a little bit quicker. Maybe not terabytes, maybe gigabytes. <laughs> I was going to say, one terabyte transferring a 100 megabit connection took 46 hours for me. Well, some of this equipment can go up to 300 megabits, so it's it's pretty impressive. That's really. theoretical, isn't it? Hmm? That's the theoretical limit of it. That's the theoretical. It's, a, it's, a it's theor 150 megabits per second bidirectional. Right. And then, you know, it's about half that in real throughput, so about 75. <laughs> if you're lucky. So, we're just going to cover the basics of this to start with. Yeah, you, you need to know your Wi-Fi setups. Yes. Right, so the first thing that we're going to cover is going to be um, the different frequencies. All these wireless signals, they run on different frequencies. Like, uh, I don't know, like if you ever saw your old cordless telephones, they were 2.4 gigahertz or 900 megahertz and... Well, and most people understand these as being B, G, N, and A. Right. But those all equate to a actual a real spectrum number. Right, right, right. So we'll we'll start out with like the details of what's 900 gigahertz, which megahertz, megahertz, megahertz. megahertz not a gigahertz yet. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see what 900 gigahertz is. Besides a <laughs> microwave pathway that would cook you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it'd be nice and toasty warm. Yeah, that's for your insides. Yeah. We're at the we're at the terahertz at that point, so you know, just don't stand <laughs> in the burnt beam. You see birds explode as it went through it. Uh, Anyways, nine hundred megahertz. You probably saw it on your old cell um, telephones, like cordless hand phones, and that's making a comeback now for um, wireless signal, like point to point, because it goes through trees really well. Um, one of the things is the low frequencies are like so. The way that it trans the, the the Wi-Fi signal transfers is these signals are like little packets and they're they add a physical size to them. So the lower the the the, the, the lower the frequency, the bigger they are. So they can pass through sure. objects without bouncing off of them, like leaves. The sine wave. Yeah. The sine wave is much bigger. Right. Right. So if you're not going a long distance, but you're trying like we we're trying to connect between houses, 900 megahertz probably would have been the way to go, because it can go through but, trees. Better. As a result, the different megahertz and into gigahertz has different speed penalties depending on which one you're at. Right. Um, well, and also distance, and and uh, that's one of the things we're going to talk about in a little bit is this uh, Fresnel zone. Like, if you're at lower frequencies, um, the it it's not as narrow of a beam. It's it's wider, so it bounces around and, and you lose a lot. So it doesn't go as far. Okay, so we have 900 megahertz. Yeah, and I, I, you see that in like um, some of the ubiquity gear. That, that you don't see any of this at like Walmart. So this is like um, a little bit, you know, yeah, higher, you used higher to, end. You used to know that as B. That was originally that was B equipment. Was when you first megahertz? had it was low power. Yeah, it was in that same spectrum as B equipment. No, no, B has been 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So I thought it was. Been... B was. I two... thought it was. So B is what you probably know and love. 
uh, B is 2.4 gigahertz, and that's been around for about 10 years now, almost. And that's started out at like two megabits, and now it's up to uh, it was like 11 megabits. 50. And the new version of okay, yeah, 11. G went up to 54, and then N yeah. goes up to 100, and that all runs in the 2.4. And they also came out with A, which was using the 5.8 gigahertz. So, totally different spectrum. Totally yeah. different spectrum. Now, all of these spectrums are, are all um, unlicensed, and anybody can use them and do whatever they want to as long as they don't exceed one full watt of power on the output. And this is the stuff that's clogging up the airwaves. Yeah, so this is everywhere. So if you're trying to get some serious distance, um, if you it's run into a lot of this, it, there's, there's only really like three channels that don't interfere with each other. Well, it yeah. depends. Um, if you start at channel one, you have to go two hops up before you don't have interference. So depending if you're on not which running a dual at. bandwidth, and if you're only running 20 uh, megahertz on the bandwidth side, if you go 40, then you have to go all the way to six. So. Yeah, so it's very congested, very noisy, um, but it works. Uh, somehow. <laughs> but a word, a word to the warning, though, if you say you buy some professional gear, or you decide to want to hack your gear, you don't want to play with outside of what is considered legal spectrum for the United States or over those power limits at times because the higher you go in the power level, the faster you get uh, noticed by things like the FCC or the FAA because at some points you start popping into FAA spectrum uh, where they actually use to land planes. <laughs> Is that is it really that close to 2.4? It's uh, it's actually when you get up to like channel, you know how in some countries they allow up to channel 14. So channel 14 is actually causes interference in FAA airwaves. Oh wow! Um, so that's when they stop at channel 11. Yeah, so channel 13 and channel 14, where you might be able to play in completely unadulterated areas, uh, if you start you bouncing. If you get bounced, if you say, because there was a company, I'll say, you know, in the area I live at now, that thought they would use their point-to-point -point spectrum and bounce some ubiquity stuff outside of the legal country they were in, and they shot it a little, you know, they were using high-gain antennas and shooting over one watt, so as Pox is going to tell you, that actually shoots your limit, you know, almost twice, you know, of what you're expecting it to be. Um, they actually came close enough to the airport that they created a problem with interference and they couldn't find it for a while. And sure, soon enough, FCC shows up, parks a couple trucks in the neighborhood, triangulates you, and you're done. <laughs> wow, the fines on that must be huge. $10,000 in incidents per day. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and the average fine. you have two incidents because you have receive and you have send. Ouch. Per day, huh? Per day it was logged, not per day they caught you. Wow. Oh. That's um, expensive. So there's, there's some <laughs> scary stuff. that If you want to start playing in areas, there's a reason why they stop you, because it's regulated. Not, not worth messing around with. Stay within, your, stay within your playground. And most of the gear, and we'll probably be talking mostly about Ubiquity, because that's what I've had experience in using. They have in their settings, you set what country you have, you tell it what kind of antenna you're using, and it automatically sets the legal limit because there's a certain amount of gain and loss that you have with different things. And we'll get into that in another episode on the antennas, um, the antenna gain that you can get by using different antennas. But yeah, you okay, want to make so, sure you stay legal. <laughs> okay, so 2.4, widely adopted, heavily congested, a lot of noise, a lot of air interference, not very good for going long distance. Up above from that, we have. Uh, we have three gigahertz. Three, yeah, three point six five gigahertz, which is new, a newer spectrum that they've released, and they'll even refer to it as um, fixed WiMAX. And it's 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 semi-regulated. It's not unlicensed. Right, but you have to apply to right. put up equipment. Yeah, with I the think. FCC. Yeah, you have to get a, a license. You actually, they, I got the license in the mail. It says I'm at a radio station, and I have call letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to broadcast. And that's how it works. To broadcast on this frequency range. Coming to you live. <laughs> well, and this all goes back to ham radio. The reason why this is all wide open is because anybody that's a ham radio operator knows these all the spectrums that they could operate in the, you know, like not quite CB citizen band stuff, but the ham radio bands, which are 
really high gain antennas and really far distances. If you want to talk about 20 miles to a ham radio operator, it's nothing. We're talking <laughs> hundreds of miles for them. So that's kind of what th that three gigahertz range is really made for. That is that was that was where it originally originally sits at. Yeah. Yeah. So this this is a little bit better. It's made for like basically what I'm doing at my work is like rural um, little wireless ISPs so they can get past all the noise of all the little tiny routers that everybody has. And they can register each location so that other people don't come by there and put their gear there and interfere with them. Because you have to register each place you put one. Right. But you well, only even, the client, even the client ones? Uh, yeah. Broadcast or receive? So if it's, if, oh wow. Really? Broadcast. So every broadcast location needs to have a broadcast tower as if you were a radio station. Yeah, That's so. You have to report everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> so when you set up a client with a 3.6 gigahertz antenna, you have to get a, a license for it from the FCC first. Yeah, you have to go to the, the FCC website and fill out the location and tell them what equipment you're using and uh, information about the site. So like, there's software out there that'll do the submission for you, and that's what I'm going to be using at work, because it, otherwise it'll be a pain. <laughs> And you're not paying a per fee, you know, a license per site, or no, you, know, are you just you? pay you pay one fee. I think it was like 250 bucks, maybe 300 bucks, to, and you get a national license, and then you just have to register everywhere you put it. Yeah. So, but you're on the same spectrum everywhere you are. So you were assigned a certain spectrum location. Right. Well, it's not it's not a, a, a it's not a unique frequency. It's just that same frequency. Everybody who applies gets that same frequency. It's just. Oh, um, I thought you were unique. I thought you had a dot something something unique in your area, so that, that no one else interfere with your stuff. No, well, from what I understand, it's only unique to. I mean, the first person to register gets that spot. Yeah. So. Okay. If I put stuff up on, like, say, uh, in our community, Griffey Hill, if I got permission to do that and I registered it with the FCC, I don't think anybody else would be allowed to put it there. Or if they do, I could, you know, contest it and be like, hey, I was here first. You're interfering with my gear, so get off. <laughs> I think that you Ooh, should go up on Griffey it. Hill just for that reason alone. Because <laughs> so you have a license and no one else does. Maybe. Maybe. You, once you're a license, remember what I told you, once you're a licensed operator, you're allowed on any tower because you have a license to be, you know, you're a licensed radio station. Hmm. You just have to apply to be on the tower. Interesting. Huh. So, so 3.6 hey. gigahertz is 802.11Y, and it's yes. channels 131 through 138. Yeah, that's why it's Ymax. Gotcha, Ooh. that makes sense. <laughs> so if you really want to get serious about it, um, that that's a pretty good frequency to go after. It's a little bit more of a hassle, but then you don't have to worry about as much congestion and noise and stuff. But at that point, you're really playing at like a professional level. You're you're not just hobbyist at that point. You're buying real big gear, and you're you know you're applying it's, for licenses. And so you're, you know for price range, like talking ubiquity gear, the 2.4 gigahertz stuff that goes literally. I've got stuff that was reaching like 18 miles is about 100 bucks, and the uh, Y Max version of it is like another. Uh, like it's like 150 bucks as opposed to 100 bucks, so everything's yeah, a so little bit more, more expensive. It's not a whole lot, so it's it's you know, it's, it's not bad. It's nothing like it's not like playing in the A spectrum. No. It's, Which is the five point whatever gigahertz. Well, the five point the five point eight gigahertz is um, what's next, or actually the older. That's what they'd call eight uh, eleven A, and N used the the five point eight spectrum. And that gear is about the same as the 2.4 gear. It's about 100 bucks. Um, oh. And most wireless ISPs use it because for long distances, it's got the most narrow beam. The Fresnel zone is much smaller. So like, so you've got line of sight, which is um, like if you're picking out a location, like I wanted to shoot between my house and your house, or your old house, I should say. And we could see each other's houses. We put up gear and it just does not work or it works, but like the, there's 50% loss. And we're like, what the heck? We can see each other's buildings, what's going on. It's because yeah. the signal looks like a big old freaking football. And yeah. all the buildings in between, it's cutting off like half of that signal. And gotcha. on the lower frequencies, that zone is much bigger. So when you get to like 500, or I mean the um, 5.8, it, it's much more narrow. Of course, the, yeah. the, the signal's smaller, so any little thing, if it's not line of sight, will 
bouncing or it's sucked off. The, the smaller frequencies in the 900 to the 2.4 are uh, they're really good for kind of like they're uh, bigger wavelengths. Some, yeah, so for, you know if you have interference, if you have to, if you have to shoot through a tree, or, it's much more forgiving. That's for sure. Yeah. But, it doesn't reflect as I fast. That's why it's used in homes. It goes through walls. It's made for, you know, like a whole house without having to like. But if you're trying to go line of sight, and that's that's the big thing about these. Uh, if you're trying to go like 20 miles, you've got to be yeah, able to point have to point. Yeah, point you point to like point. Very nothing in the way. <laughs> and apparently, no hills underneath you either, or, or other a things. Snowflake causes it to interrupt. Snowflake getting there and it goes all wonky. <laughs> Actually. Truth be told, if you have a really heavy snowstorm like we're known to have in Wyoming, uh, where you have a really, really big puffy snow falling at one time, you absolutely have major interference. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's it does like degrade. static. It interferes static in the whole thing. It does it degrade the signal um, a little bit. It, heavy rain does the same thing. It's, it's worse with the higher frequencies, like especially like you're, you're talking about the, um, the really high-end microwave gear that's like three, uh, 30, 30 gigahertz and stuff. That it does make a big difference on that gear. Yeah. But at that point, your 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 power ratio versus how big your you know your gigahertz spectrum is. Yeah, you can burn you're through it. Burning through that. <laughs> so. so that's that's the basics this week on um, all the different frequencies that are out there to do long range stuff. Uh, I hope to post some videos of like some real world examples of like how far this can actually go and the different type of rigs that I have set up and. They're successful. Well, they work pretty good. Take some take some video of that, you know, that rig on the water tower and show how kind of neat things you could set up in remote places. Yeah. You don't have to tell where it's at, but it's and that'll be part of, really the neat stuff done. part of the show of radios and solar panels and battery packs and things like that. Yeah, so like if you have yeah. a hill on the way, you could theoretically throw up a solar panel and, and like a couple units to repeat the signal over the hill. <laughs> and you yeah. don't have to have any power. In theory. <laughs> in theory. I mean, it, it works. It's just, you know, it's not that simple. It's expensive. It's expensive, and you got to have permission and all that jazz. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the beginning. The frequency range, 900, 2.4, 3.6. Did we talk about 5? Yeah, we talked about 5.8 okay. yeah. at the end. 5.8. 5. Yeah. And then, of course, the Fresnel zone or the shape of each wireless spectrum as well. Yeah. So we'll get into uh, next time we do an episode like this. We might probably be doing a CS, uh, CES episode next week or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the next week one on this next. week. We'll see. Um, yeah, but just to remind everybody, I'm going to be doing a bunch of shows from CES. Uh, second week of January. So stay tuned for that. And post stay away from the freaking TVs, man. We need something else besides the TVs. I, yeah. didn't, did I, I didn't even have anything about the TVs last year, did I? Cool gadgets, cool gadgets, always cool gadgets. <laughs> Every time I remember you going to CES, it's always, oh my God, the TVs, oh wow! Like, I don't care! I, I just remember seeing lots of gaming stuff. I want I want cool gadgets. I want things I'm not going to ever see. Okay, we'll look for, well, I'll look I'll look for the really weird stuff, and I'll try and find that, because you don't look see that. Beer bot. that look for a beer bot. Still. A beer bot? Yes. Okay, I'll look for a beer bot. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, All right. live show every Wednesday night now at 8.30 Mountain Time. And Which is fantastic for people on the East Coast because it's 10.30, and it's not so bad for the people on the you know the Pacific Time because it's well whopping 7.30. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's better. Okay. And we're, we're a little bit more alert now. <laughs> little yes. And we, we might show up. <laughs> Slightly less drowsy. <laughs> Uh, see you guys next week. New shows every Monday at twosmartguys.com. Bye, guys. This has been the Two Smart Guys production.